I'm Christy Hughes, author of the book Strong Roots, Wayward Soul, and founder of the Brave Kind Healing Arts. And by healing arts, I mean anything that is a creative outlet that helps you on your healing journey. So whether that's writing, like writing a book, or sound therapy or Reiki, both of which I am certified in, or coming out to spend a retreat weekend on our beautiful 20 acre hobby farm and just being immersed in nature and its creative beauty. All of those things are part of what the Brave Kind Healing Arts offers. Today, I wanna to talk to you about confidence because the two pillars that the Brave Kind is founded on are courage and compassion. It is one thing to be such an open-hearted, soft person who loves sound healing and yoga and all of these calm and kumbaya type practices. Most of the time, people who gravitate to those like me are very quiet, possibly introverted, possibly want to make everybody else happy, people pleasing, sometimes even bordering on doormat. That is where courage comes in. I was scared of everybody, everything, my own shadow for a very long time. The way I coped with that anxiety, social anxiety, being nervous around people, being shy, was to drink. And for me, drinking became a very problematic part of my life. That might not be your crutch, but odds are, if you are a person who is very fearful or not very courageous or stuck in a very small comfort zone, there is probably some vice that you are leaning on. And that's okay. One of the first things that you can do to improve your confidence is to really do some soul searching and see if that crutch or that vice is what's holding you back. I am not equipped to help you with that particular piece of it, but I'm happy to answer questions, especially if alcohol is particularly your crutch of choice. You can also read my book, Strong Roots, Wayward Soul, which is a memoir of how I got sober and might give you a little bit of inspiration. However, these tips are not just for people who have problem roadblocks in their life. life. Maybe it's just that you, know, you wish you were a little more courageous and you wish you were a little more brave and you wish you were way more confident. So, here are my five tips for developing more confidence. Some of these are things I picked up from my recovery journey. Some are things that I've read in books. I have different authors and thought leaders that I absolutely love to credit as I'm going through. Um, I can also give some resources in another handout um, that I have attached to this email. So I hope that you find some value in all of it and that you can start to develop confidence and step out of your comfort zone. So, number one, and I have to credit Alexis with this from Schitt's Creek. There is a scene from that show that I absolutely love, and she talks about how nobody cares. I heard this so often in my recovery journey and early sobriety where I was still worried about what everybody else thought. And my mentor would say, nobody's thinking about you nearly as much as you are thinking about you. And what she meant by that was when I would ruminate over conversations, I would have maybe a difficult conversation with my boss. First thing in the morning, and at the end of the evening, I can't go to sleep because I'm still thinking about that conversation. Odds are, he forgot about that conversation 10 minutes after it happened. And that is nothing against his memory. 
It's just one of those things that when we are a person who tends to ruminate over conversations, a lot of times that is in our own head. So nobody cares. And that's not to say people don't care about you, but when you start to think about things that maybe were just what would be normal conversations for other people, or maybe somebody was direct with you and you took it very personally, but they didn't mean it to be hurtful, then those are the types of things that you can say, you know what, nobody cares. Really, people are so wrapped up in their own lives that they don't have time to be thinking about you. They're off taking kids to soccer practice or trying to work something out with their husband or doing the dishes or doing the laundry and not thinking about that conversation that the two of you had two weeks ago. One tip I have to help overcome this is when you start to get more brave and more confident, tackle those things head on. I've had more than one person come to me lately and say, hey, I'm a little worried that something I said might have offended you. It didn't. I totally didn't have that opinion of, that they thought I had, but by them coming to me and asking me, I could say, oh, I didn't take it that way at all. That helped ease their mind and helped me realize, well, maybe my reaction was a little bit different than I expected it to be and or intended it to be. And I can think about how I manage those conversations. Number two, no is a complete sentence. Let me say that one again. No is a complete sentence. You don't have to justify why you're saying no to something. You don't have to feel bad about why you're saying no to something. I think this can be the biggest confidence crusher because just like number one, we ruminate over what the other person is going to think when we say no. Yes, it could be that you really feel like you're gonna let them down by saying no. But once you start to practice saying no, it becomes far more easier. Far more easy, it becomes easier. Here I am kind of obsessed with grammar and I'm not sure how that should go. <laughs> but I'm confident enough to own that I may have just made a huge grammatical error. It's okay. So back to no, N-O. That is a very easy thing to remember and requires no grammatical rules because it's no, N-O, period. Have I reinforced that enough? No? Okay, let's try it again. No is a complete sentence. All right, moving on. Because now, number three, the past is the past. <laughs> so, I don't want your confidence to be crushed by anything that has happened in the past. I understand that trauma work and expressing feelings that are stored and looking at things that have led to patterns in our lives is very important. So I'm not suggesting that you not do the work if you do need to heal past trauma. What I'm talking about is thinking that just because something was the, this way in the past means that that has to be what your future looks like. I, for example, was a problem drinker and a binge drinker and a blackout drinker. I don't remember half of the times I went out with my friends and I really was embarrassed the next day when I'd ask people what had happened the night before or maybe what I'd said, especially if someone was cross with me. Now, I am present, I enjoy conversations, I sometimes forget things because life is busy and we all are a little bit forgetful these days. I think something has happened over the last couple of years with the pandemic and our busyness and our reliance on tech that has made us a little bit frazzled all of the time. However, that's a lot different than losing hours of time like I used to. 
So for me, that's really, I've really had to let go of the embarrassment and shame that came with who I was in the past and not project that into the future. At the same time, I also have to let go of what happened to me in the past as it relates to being picked on or feeling so self-conscious all the time and having absolutely no self-esteem. It's easy for me to think, oh, I'm still that girl. I'm still the one with no self-esteem. I'm still trapped in the past, but that is not true today. And sometimes I almost get uncomfortable with how much I play it big. And it's been very hard for me to understand that I am inspiring others. For me, sometimes the old story I can tell myself about the past is that I'm just seeking attention or like childhood friends would say, fishing for compliments. <laughs> Those old stories can be really hard to let go of. So just remember, it is insert the date right now. I am recording this on 10 7 22, but whatever date it is that you're watching it, insert today's date and say, I get to live forward from here. Number four is very much tied into number three, and that is about self-limiting beliefs. Let go of self-limiting beliefs. Those can be anything from, in the example that I used a minute ago, it could be whenever I post something on social media, I'm fishing for compliments. Really, I want to help others in the way that others have helped me. I've been on this amazing journey of transformation for the past five years. I credit my yoga community, Allie Van Fossen. I credit my sobriety community, The Unruffled, led by Tammy Solace and Sandra Primo. I credit books I've read, namely Brene Brown. <laughs> so there are a lot of people who have led the way for me now I want to pay that forward. Every social media post, every time I share a big milestone or even a small milestone, I want it to be so that others can look and say, wow, Christy's doing it, I can do it too. That is the confidence that I want to instill in you by sharing things that happened to me because I was such a wallflower with social anxiety who binge strength to cope with all of it and never got anything accomplished that I wanted to. I always blamed it on self-sabotage, which was a self-limiting belief of mine too. I'm a self-saboteur. Okay, why bother? Why bother even trying to start anything when you know you're just gonna self-sabotage? And maybe that's your story. Let's change that. Create a new belief that is the absolute opposite of that self-limiting belief that you are hanging on to. So maybe that new belief, whether you believe it today or not, is I finish what I start. I finish what I start. I finish what I start. Take the steps to get there, even if you take the steps one little day at a time and then you know it takes two years it took me two years to open my retreat business and part of that was pandemic related so i wasn't in any hurry because i knew that people were not going to want to be together in person back in 2020 or even 2021 so it gave me the time to really be slow and methodical about that process and make sure that I had dotted all my I's and crossed all my T's. So guess what? I finished what I started when I hosted my first retreat on September 9th. Whatever it is for you, whatever that self-limiting belief, and sometimes they can be sneaky, think about it, create the opposite, write it down. There is so much power in writing things down. And you can look behind me. This is my little Kanban board that I use to, to create to-do lists. But I also sometimes dream on this board. <laughs> so there's things up there that are more about, you know, here's the different things that I want to accomplish. And seeing them in writing really helps. So write down your new beliefs 
look at them every day, say them every day, they will come true. Finally, and what I think is, I don't know, I feel like they're all five very important, but when I think about this one, number five, comfort zones are malleable. Your comfort zone today may not be any bigger than this room. You may not have the confidence to go talk to somebody outside of your house. You may not have the confidence to go up to somebody that you admire at work or at your yoga studio. Maybe your comfort zone feels like it's about this big and that's okay. But I want you to start thinking about things that you would like to achieve Break them down into small steps, and every time you take one of those little baby steps, your comfort zone grows. Maybe you do go up to that person that you really admire in a class that you're in or a community that you're in or at work. Can you say, hey, I'd really like to grab coffee some morning. And maybe you go and you have coffee with that person, and you find out that you have 10 other things in common. And then you've got a new friendship formed. That is going to sit with you and you're gonna say, wow, I took a risk, that paid off. Or it may not. Maybe, you, maybe that person cancels on you five times or maybe you get together and find out you really don't have anything in common and maybe they talk a lot and you actually don't really like hanging out with them. That's okay too. That is just one example. Maybe it's just signing up for a class. Maybe you wanna take a cooking class or an art class or a writing class. Maybe it's just signing up for something like that. And then attending would be useful too. But even if you don't talk to anybody in the class, just going is putting yourself out there. So when you put yourself out there and you refer to number one, nobody cares, then you don't have to worry about what everyone is thinking about and thinking about you. You may go to that painting class and you're sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, I'm a terrible painter. Self-limiting belief. Nobody's gonna like what I paint. Nobody cares. And I'm just gonna bomb this class. That's not how your experience should look. You should pat yourself on the back for signing up and going to the class. You should complete it because it's something that sounded really fun to you and you have a new belief that you want to paint and that you're gonna have fun painting and you finish your painting class and somebody says, I really like that. Hey, do you wanna go grab coffee? And wow, look at you. You're a shining star with more confidence. So I hope you found these helpful. Again, nobody cares. No is a complete sentence. The past is in the past. Create new beliefs instead of self-limiting beliefs. And comfort zones are malleable. If you want to explore the idea of bravery and courage in depth even more, I have a full six module course available on my website, or even better, you can come out to part-time pastures for one of my brave kind workshops and learn not only about courage and confidence, but also about delivering that with compassion. Thank you so much for watching and please reach out if you have any questions or need any encouragement from me.